I can't look at the laptop and face my public at the same time. Um, in a second, I'll take that handle out. Yeah, I've just got a problem with one of the cameras isn't working right. It's making just a small picture, so I'll have to take the camera that normally shows you the panes and move that into place. So 
I will sort that this afternoon. But it's only just found it out that it's not working properly, so I'll sort it this afternoon. So I don't know if there's anybody actually there because I can't see any comments coming in. Um, but I'll turn to the main view. Like I said, gradually we'll get this sorted. We'll get this sorted. Now, this isn't going to be everything painted there, so it's going to be a bit slower. So if you're just watching and you want to watch a little bit and go away, have a cup of tea or something and come back, I'm going to be doing the castle off this photograph that they sent me um, and getting that in. So it'll take a while to get that because I want the detail and then later on, not today I don't think, we'll detail more in the boats, etc. Um, this photograph is really over-exaggerated. It's, you know, when people try to make them brighter and more contrast, so it's a little bit grainy, the, like the bricks are all just standing out too much, so I don't want to, I'm just going to use it as a basis because I, I don't want it as strong as that. Even the sea down here doesn't look right. It looks broken because they've just over over exaggerated, which is a lot of people do do. I do do. Well, we've got somebody. Hi, Alison. You all right? Got Alison on. So we're getting getting some people in. Ah, Jeannie. Morning, Jeannie. So yes. Yeah, so we'll. I'm getting my hair cut today. I'm going to get him to put a piece in. Um. So yes. Yeah, so. What I'm going to do is change to another camera and get us close, but it's not the best camera. The best camera seems to have uh, done something wrong. And I'm going to go close up on this and paint this properly, so it'll be a slower process than if I'm just going like that. But after we get this one done, after we get this one done, which is going to take another couple of days at least, I'm going to do a big, um, more abstract thing with palette knives, etc. Uh, not, not totally abstract, but a bit more loose and palette knives. I've got a big canvas, I'll do that next time. This this is detail, but this is an order and needed. So I shall uh, I shall get on and I'll change cameras over. So you're going to see this more than anything than me actually. Work. I've got my paints down here, but I can't put the camera on them because, uh, because one of the cameras is off. So... I'll just swap cameras over and we'll see where we are. Right, so you've got the you've got close-up here. So this is a close-up. So I'm going to use this as a close-up with this camera here. It's at a slight angle, so it may look just slightly distorted. I've got a, I've got a flexible thing coming. I've got all sorts coming. But uh, I want this camera to be on a flexible thing so I can just move it closer in and out. And it hasn't landed as of yet. So I think the focus is fine as far as I can see on that. Can't alter the focus anymore because I'm right close in. Right, okay. So what I want to do, the ca this is the photograph. I'll just move the photograph in for you a bit so you can see it. Kind of blot everything out. Okay. I've moved it back, sorry. I'll tell you what, I'll put a bit of tape there so you can see a better angle. One sec. Just stick it. It's only soft pack tape this, so it'll not, it'll not affect the painting. There, right. I'm going to start. I am going to start. So, small brushes for this. What I'm going to first of all use is this one. Uh, because it, when I first did this in the uh, on Tuesday, I just blocked it in quite rough. But I can see looking at it, it needs to be just a little bit taller in places. And this wall needs to be taller. So I'm going to use this and mix some colours. So I'm mixing. I've just got, wait a second, I'm just going to spray my colours because I've had them out for a second or two. I'm just going to dampen them a little bit. Just get a little bit, not much. Like I said, water breaks it down. Now the way I sort of work on these is I make it darker than I paint in lighter. But I've already blocked a lot in, so we'll just see see how we go. If if I'm painting and I miss your comments, I will keep having a look. So I'm mixing some burnt sienna and yellow orchid together, and I'm adding just a little bit of blue. A little bit of cobalt blue in, so it just 
dulls it down, makes it a more darker thing. I'm going to paint in dark, and then I'm going to uh, start detailing it. So, like I said, I want this tower to be taller, and that one. So I want that to be coming up here. Bit, bit stronger, just up there. Now you can just break it in coming down. It doesn't have to be uh, doesn't have to be all encompassed with paint. So that's up there. So that that's about right for that area just there. And then there's a little bit into there, like that. I'll zoom in a bit for you. I can zoom in a bit. I'm just aware that you might get too too close. That's all right. Zoom in. So there's a tower just up here, just behind that, just there, taller than this one. So I'm just sort of showing where I want it. These need to be taller. These need to go taller than this side over here. At least this one does. So it wants to be, and it wants to come out a bit more. So it wants to be farther over to here and farther over to here. So you can just see a bit more of the shadowy side of it. And this one just wants darkening around the corner a bit and down here. Like I said, this is this is a slower process, so there's there's not a lot of uh, slapping paint on. This always looks round, but in actual fact, it's got a curve, then a hard, then a straight line. It's not totally rounded. You just blot this in, and then you've got these little bits here, or bits at the back. Just get them sort of shaped in. I think that's a bit too high. Put some blue sky back into there and get that in. So we've got that shape, taking it along. So it wants to come along, along the side here. And I've basically got that about where I want it. Little gap and then just a rise up there. And this needs to be longer. This needs to go out to about there. And into that area like that. So we're getting, getting, it might look on an angle to you. Uh, and that's because the camera's coming in at an angle. So it might look as though it's leaning over, but it's not. Trust me, it's not. Down there. And then fetching that across there. I'm just blocking it in with this yellow orca burnt sienna and a little bit of blue in just to get the, the, sh the outline of where I want to be. Little steps up and down and then gradually I'll tidy it up. There's just three little sort of castellations just there. And they come down like that. Out there a bit. Drag some paint in broken so that you get the broken surface. I don't want the, the detail on the bricks the way they are on the photograph because it's just too much. I'll just wet them. I had these paints out for about half an hour or so and they're just starting to turn a little bit. I'll just I'll have to move that. Tell you what. There you go. Tear that off then it's not in the wood. Right, so I've got that coming along there. It then sort of tilt, tilts out a little bit there, drops down to another spot there, like that. Little tower at the end. And then it goes along there, and it's darker at that corner. Remember, it's turning away from you. It's, it's not a flat castle. It's gradually turning away. And there's a little tower thing just in the, there. And then that comes down. And then another bit of the, and this is the wall going round the corner. So I need to sort of lower these grasses a little bit down here as they're going round there. Now, what you've got is this wall here wants to be higher, this wall that's in front. So I'm just going to add a bit of white to the yellow orca. So I'm just adding, I'm, I'm mixing the same colours in, the blue burnt sienna and the thing, but I'm adding a little bit of white into it so it's lighter. Then I want to create a, a sort of a, a lighter side to it. That's a bit too a bit too bright. I'm just dulling it down with a little bit of blue. Don't want it as bright as that. That's better. 
just dragging it in and breaking it up. And just mix. I've got the colours in various combinations so I can just pick them out as I want. So that's lighter there, just there, into that. That's a bit lighter, just there, into there, coming down. That wall there is light, so that wants to come down. This is this is sort of an area in front of the castle. I'll put the castle wall in, just lighter. I'll put the castle wall in, and it wants to be going along here, taller than I had it, so it wants to be going along here, like that. This is the top of the castle wall. So it's taller. Just getting the shape of it in. Vary the colours. And just when it gets to about here, it just drops slightly. And then there's a few little castellations just here. And then it drops again just there. It comes out there. And then there's a, a rising tower just about there. I'm trying to make sure I'm talking to the mic at the same time. Like that there. And then I'll get a little bit lighter, a bit more white into it, because there's an area of stonework that's quite light just here. And that sort of comes across here. And this is an entrance. There's an entrance in there. And then this is a walled area here. Like that. And there's an entrance just about here as well. And that sort of comes around the corner. There's a lighter, lighter sense of a turreted area just going up there. And a little one just up there. And then this just gradually vanishes round the corner. And into this area here. So it's, it's a matter of building, building up. I know it looks on a slant, but what I need to do is get this arm that's coming so the camera can be directly in front, so it's not it's on an angle just over to here, so it looks like slanted. Now, you've got that sort of windmill feel. I don't know what it is, but it looks like an old windmill. And that's just about here. So just put the... It's slightly angled, like that, a whitish top. So we'll just put a... A suggestion of a top and it just peaks above the above the wall and then it comes down this side like that and then you've got another just a bit more paint in there you've got another one just here like a, a little one just here which goes out there and then you've got a wall just there rounded like that and then in front of this you have like a a square, it's, it's, it looks like it's got about five sides. It's got an edge like that, an edge in the middle, and then one going round into shadow there. And that comes down in front of this. Just going to drag a little bit more light into that. So I'm just establishing this. Now, a bit of ochre and yellow and white. I've got this high, I want this lower. I want this lower when I blocked it in because we want green in there. So this this cliffside wall, there's a little wall runs right along up to that point there. So it goes along there like that. That's fine, but it wants to drop more. So that wants to be just a bit lower than what I've got it in the first place. So I'm just going to put a bit of white under there so I can see where I want that. And that wall goes across and up to that area there, the lighter. The later part of it. So you've got that. Then you've got cliff. So mix a bit of burnt sienna blue, burnt sienna blue, and drag this sort of the darker side of this cliff down, which is coming from here like this, and coming down to the edge. So I'm going to make this taller. When I blocked it in, I, I made it too flat. So I'm, I'm making this. There's a cliff here, and then you've got the the sand dunes just behind it just there so just establishing that area and then it rises up it, it's okay up here but just down here it needs to be a bit stronger so that's going to be the cliff so then the sand dunes i'll just mix a little bit of yellow into the blue just mixing a little bit of yellow into blue so you can show that the sand dunes wait a second it's I'll put a bit stronger in, so I'll turn it down, just trying to show you, so the sand dunes would come along here, instead of up there. So this is grasses in front of the castle, so I'm just putting them in 
broken like that. And them grasses would go up to there, which is fine. Don't worry about the off side of it. I'm not concentrating on that. That'll take some sorting out. And then this is the, the beach coming down. So the grasses come down to about there, like that. I'll, I'll drag them in properly. And then you've got a little sense of beach, just a light beach just here. And that goes round there and gradually just disappears off to the side. But the moment I'm just establishing little bits, just tone that down a little bit. Just establishing the total shape of it. So I've made the castle taller, it was looking a bit short. So now I'm just gonna get, I'm saying yellow orchid, but it's actually raw sienna that I've got because I seem to have run out of yellow orchid. So it's raw sienna, but it's virtually the same. In watercolors, the raw sienna is actually more transparent than the, the yellow orchid. So I'm just using the same brush, this, this brush here, and I'm just gonna start dragging in over the top just to start breaking the texture up. Not worried about sharpness or detail yet, I'm just dragging in just to create some of the stonework. And obviously leaving it darker round that side. There's a little bit of light into there. I've got paint up here, I don't know if you can see, I must have touched with paint up in the sky. Just above, above that tape there, I've got a, it could be a hang glider. You can see the light on that little patch just going past there. And just drag a little bit more light into here. We want this to feel going round the edge and darkening over to this side, darkening to the left. Just dragging in little bits of texture. So the shadow here, but there's light just there. And there's light just there like that into there and another one just there like that various patches just catching the light not as dark as we've got it so you're just dragging color over and allowing it allowing it to break to, to allow breaks through so that it's not it's not solid dark and it's not light i'm dragging it in fairly loose so some of the original color shows through even under this, um, even under this one. I'm, I was going to touch that in, but in actual fact, I realise I'm leaning on the green, so I'm going to leave the bottom half alone till I get the top part in where I want it. So a bit of white into this, this raw sienna now, a little bit of white into it, and just going to drag in some more little sense of colours into the wall. So I'll go along the top edge of the wall like that. Get the shape of it, drop it down. Just break the colours up through it, so you, you, you're allowing the colours to just, just to show through. Fairly light just down that side of that one there, and a lot lighter into here. A bit more lighter into that. Drops down there, pull that down to there, lighten that up. Lighten these edges up. Bit of light. You've got this, this is where there's a doorway here, and then it sort of steps along here and rises up there, like a, a slight tower just there. And a one. This one's actually in front, it sticks out. So that's about level with or set back from that wall. This bit is in front of the wall and it steps out. And then you want a nice light a bit just underneath where the, and I'll just call it a windmill because I don't know what else to call it. The windmill will have a nice top to it and a light a bit just there, just dragged across. And then this light wall going across there. Just keep mixing your, your colours, yellow orcas, burnt sienas, I've got the blue. The blue just helps give it a, a bit of tone to it. And then just drag in broken bits. And then we'll deal with shadow, etc. afterwards. 
tougher corn. So now I've lowered that wall to about there. That greenery there wants to be coming across here a bit. So that greenery, I've just put a bit of, all, all I'm going to do is put a bit of yellow in to sort of show where it wants to be. So that's going to be your entrance. So the greenery comes up that side of it. Now I know this is bright, but it's just so that I can sort of show you where I'm going to be with it. So that's going to come down like that. Down to the beach area like that. Just dragging it in. And that's beach there. Right. I don't know if you can see the... I'll just zoom out a fraction, see if you can see the blob I made. There. That big patch of black paint. I'm going to lay it dry then see if I can take it off. Right, so we need more light into this first. So I'm just going to get the yellow orchid, raw sienna, a bit of white into it. I might even add a little bit, a little bit of cadmium yellow in just to get that little bit of light, not too much. And take the excess paint off and just sort of dry brush it. Just sort of dry brushing over the canvas so you're just leaving a sense of texture. I'll straighten it up. There, there is a curve just there because uh, because I've just dragged it down. I need to get in closer with uh, with the paint and just sort of level that out. And that wants to be now that wants to be sky. There wants to be a little bit of castle there, but that wants to be sky just there. So I'll tone that down afterwards. And like I say, it curves across the top like that and then it goes sort of straight and then starts to curve so all I'm doing is sort of dry brushing even into this dark pit just dry brushing downwards with some strokes to break the, to break the, the texture up into the edges and that wants to be lighter as well Right, so I think we've got that sort of established the shape where we want, like that. I'll tell you what I might do. I might come down and do some work. I don't know. This is drying, but it's not drying very fast. No, it'll be all right, I'll paint it. Otherwise, if I paint down here, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be struggling up there. So I'm just going to get a smaller brush and start painting in some shapes, etc. So I've got basically watercolour brushes, but uh, they, they're not expensive ones, they, they're fairly cheap. I've got loads of them up here in the gallery, and I'm just going to start shaping in, up here, touching in. Just, it must be warm up in here, because everything's drying quicker. Right, so same principle, a bit of yellow ochre, um, and a bit of white, even a little touch of burnt sienna, so just sort of graying it off a little bit. I've got a stick here if I need it, wait a second. I've got a, a, a gnarl stick up there. That's like a modern equivalent of a, of a gnarl stick. That you can use to rest on it goes short or long and you rest this on the top of the canvas and then rest your hand on there so you would put that onto there like that and rest your hand on and paint downwards like that i'll change to the zoomed in camera so i've got that like that once we're fairly wet and i'm going to just get a clean edge down here i'm just going to move this a fraction because that's there is just leaning on the paint a bit. Lift that up a fraction. That's better. So it's not leaning on the paint. And all you're doing is you, you, you're putting the, the form on the top and then you're using this just to rest your hand on and to start painting in the edges and the detail and getting a cleaner edge to it. 
It doesn't have to be totally thing. It's meant to be in the background, so you don't want... You want it to blur into the land a little bit, into the sky a little bit. Otherwise, everything is too rigid, which is on this photograph. And there's a, I'll put a little sense of blue into there, the middle, where that castellation is, and touch in some blues. Actually, there's a wall just there, a little bit just back there. It's a windmill, says Google, right. Thought it was, it just looked like a windmill. Into there. A little bit of light into these buildings. So using this just to rest on, you just keep moving it along, and you can just pull into the canvas. So there's a castellation there, lighter. I'll come back in a second and put the sky in, in between. Castellation there. Then along there like that. And just drag in some things. You don't want too much shot. And you don't want too much You want a sense of texture in between. I'll use the blue in a minute, and very pale, to, to get the sky back. Uh, I'll just go over to there. I'll just lighten the side of this. So these are great, these marl sticks. You, I mean, the traditional ones of wood with the a ball on the end, a cloth ball on the end. But this is a, this is sort of a modern version. Suggest a little bit of texture into there like that. Come along, get the top part edges done. So you've got that castellation there. There's a little step there, and then there's a castellation there. And then this taller bit here. Just going in behind these turrets just here. Sort of a clean edge. If you, it, this is slidey, so you can actually just sort of slide your hand down and get the edge, get the sort of side view that you want by just sort of sliding your hand onto that. It's like sort of a very light aluminium type feel to it. Bring it along a bit. And then you've got a little bit of light on the far wall. So on the far wall, you've got just a little bit of light. I can fetch that, I can fetch that over a bit. Fetch that over a bit because it's just a bit too broad that. So I'm fetching that over there a bit. I'm putting this lighter edge just into there where the light's catching either side. Little touches. And then it comes out here and down there a bit lighter. Press there. I just need to darken that in the fraction. I'm just going to get a little bit of burnt sienna and blue, just slightly grayed off, and just create that. That sort of edge just down there. It's just like a little bit of the castle wall just there. The other side of, just behind it. Like that, just there. And while you're on with that, he wants blue mixing. It doesn't want to be bright burnt sienna, so it wants to be torn. It wants to be sort of grayed off with, grayed off with the, bl the blue. And that way you're not getting too bright of a colour. Take it across the top of the turret over this side. Fetch it down. I'm just get a bit more blue into there, it's just a, still a bit bright. Drag it darker across there and down that left hand side. Just breaking it up. And then get go back to your sort of your yellow orca, a little bit of burnt sienna in, and you blend. So you just sort of blend into that so that it's it's a gradual feeling you shove colour back in, white back in, bits of orca back in, so there's not there's not a, a point where that it suddenly changes, just blending that back in. Some little windows, we'll get to all the detail 
in about six weeks time get that like i said that on your on your on the camera that looks as though it's slanting down it isn't it's just the camera's uh, at an angle from it so we've got that I want it lighter just here so just where there's a there's actually there's actually a little turreted area just coming up in front of that from this wall so there's a little light turreted area just coming up there into that and that's the sort of the start of the wall there we shape it afterwards a little bit of light there and a little bit of light there and just a touch into that dark and then we need some blue into there as well and this wants to just step down just wants to be stepping down the side of it so you want to, you want it to sort of just feel as though the brickwork is going down the grass grass verge is just sort of growing up into it I'm going to put a bit of white into the edge of that towel there so that it stands out a bit. It's very thin. It's got a little window actually just there, a little window just sticking out from it. And then just a little sense of a, a line just there. And then that's strong the shadow just over there. Right, I'm going to mix, just got a bit of tissue, I'm just going to mix a little bit of blue and sort of level out that, uh, the edges where the, where the blue wants to be. So I've just got a little, little bit of tissue and uh, a bit of water. I'm just going to make a light, a light pale blue with the cerulean blue, with the cerulean blue and white. So. You don't need much, you just need a little hint. Because if you make it too dark, it'll jump out too much. So I'm just mixing a little bit of white and cerulean blue. Sort of like that. And I'm just going to touch into where the sky is wants to be. So the sky wants to be in there a little bit. Just need to make it a bit lighter, a bit more white in. Better. So sky wants to come down there. It wants to come down here and across that darker patch just there. Just down to there like that. And then just a little touch in there where I spilled over it. A bit more light into it. Sometimes you have to use more lighter than you think because you can see a dot coming out there and the more I try to touch it so I've just got to lighten it up and then blend it in a little bit. I'll have to touch that just a bit more blue into there. Just blend that out. I'll tone that down because that's just too strong. I'll tone it down. So now we need to get the castellations in the top. Just using the, the, the blue uh, the uh, cerulean blue and the white we just need to create the sense of castellations or any mistakes we've made so just here it's just a little you don't see much you don't see much because uh, of the sort of the darker side of the, the dark side of the tower just sticking up a little bit so you just see a little bit of light just there and a little bit into there and like i said you have to use lighter color sort of to, to create it so you've got the castellation there in there with the sky and then there and there now I'm going to blot that right through there and then just tidy the edges of, with the ochre afterwards so I'm just blotting that right through and I'm just separating a little bit of blue and white between this tower here so just separating it by just putting a little bit of blue and white down there so that and I'll make that just a bit broader and then there's a castellation in there it's just a little bit of blue and white into there and then a little fraction just into the far one 
If you get it started, then, then you know you can start building up extra bits after that. A little bit in there. Just tidying edges up a little bit with the blue, just making sure little patches are out you know, and come across. And there's a few castellations over here. Just going to lighten it up a little bit because the sky is just that little bit lighter there where the cloud is. So just lighten, lighten it up and just cross here. There's castellations in there, so you just need a little bit of light in between them. Tidy the tops up. A little bit in there. That's down there. There wants to be some just down there like that. I think that's all right. I think the sky's in there. I'm just going to drag a little bit of pale of white just across it because it looks a bit uh, a bit stronger there. So I'm just going to blend it in a little bit of white and just blend it in a little bit more. Like I say, it's not a it's not a spectator sport. This one, so don't if you if you if you can't watch it all, don't worry because all I'm, I'm not going to send these videos up as yet till I've um, finished it, and then I'm going to edit them all together and take out take out any sort of bits of rubbish in between, slim them down, and just concentrate on the painting, and then I'll send it up to you. So this is all dry now. I can I can rest on this now. I don't need the marl stick. Right. So I think we're fine. So it's now really starting to to pull the detail in down here. So yellow orca, a little a little bit of burnt sienna in, and even a touch of blue. You want, you want this to be grey, it doesn't want to be bright, bright yellow orca. And I'm just going to sort of tidy this edge up down here. I'm going to make it wetter, so I'm just wetting the, wetting the paint a little. I'm, all I'm doing is spraying it with this spray. Because you don't want to soak, you don't want to soak the paint. Otherwise it, it does lose its plasticity. You just want it wet enough so that you can and grey you know, so that you can just sort of float into it and get a clean straight line. Sharpen the top up a little bit. Like I said, break, break it up. Don't try and pit everything in one sort of colour. I'm just going to do, do, drag some of that paint into that because that's just a bit too strong. And just tone that down. Then castellations or those castellations just there. And I'm going to broaden that out a little bit. And then come into this and this this tower here wants to be about the same width as that remember there's a dark shadow to come down that side so i think it's about the same width now get it a bit lighter put more orca into it with some white and just lighten down the edge a little bit of this so where it's going to come slightly in front you know stepped out a little bit just lighten the edge and try and get a clean edge down where the shadow part goes to. Get a clean edge down there. Right, and then just break some through into this. Just scrumble some paint into it so you're just seeing little bits of texture 
you might have to touch that blue just up a fraction afterwards. So just building it up. If if this had been in the distance, I wouldn't have even been doing this. Um, from your angle, that looks taller than that. Trust me, it isn't. Wait a second, I'll switch the other camera so you can see. Zoom in a bit more. Turn the camera around the fraction. Can't zoom in much more on that, but you can see there that the, the, the right these are these are taller than this, just a fraction. But on your camera, on this camera, because it's it's way off to this side, you, you look at an angle which makes things look taller, which makes things obviously nearer, makes them look bigger. And just lower the canvas a bit down for you. There you go. And try and angle it back. I'm trying to press this stand out and then tilt it upwards so that you get a, a slightly better view. That's it. So that, that canvas is I'm, that tower there is is taller than that. It's only because you're looking at such an angle. And I will, I will sort these cameras out afterwards. Right, so we've got that. I'm going to put in some, start putting in some detail now. So we want burnt sienna and blue. I'm not using the black at this stage. I'm just mixing some burnt sienna with the blue. Just to get a, a, a darker grey more than anything. So blue and burnt sienna. Mix together and allow it to sort of flow and darken down a fraction over there on that side, that turreted side, and a fraction over this side. And you pull that down like that, little touches just to the side. At the moment, we can get finer. I'm just building up the thickness, the, the, the width of the side walls as they're turning away from you. A little bit of castellation in there, a little bit down there. Little touches in there and then into here. Across the top, down there. You want a little touch into them. And then you want a few little shadows into that there. And that wants to be straight. Now, we've al I've already established the, the edges of it, and I'm just breaking some colour in rather than putting too dark at the moment. So this is brown and blue, and I'm going to lighten it up a little bit because you want a sense of a sense of shadow, but a sense of reflected light off this. So you don't want this shadow to be too to be too strong. And the whole thing, as I say, it looks taller. I can't get it. I can't. If I lower the canvas, I'll not be able to paint. I'll be too far down. So just trust me till I get another camera that this area here isn't as tall as it looks on the camera. It's because the camera's below it looking up. So just, just have faith. I think I have. I think I have. In fact, as I'm getting down this detail, I'm going to need to put my glasses on. I'm, not, I'm painting without glasses at the moment because I, do, I don't really need them. Um, <laughs> I'm just establishing the darks on the edges. And then we come in with finer detail and establish them. So this bit here, this got a light edge here. It's like a the light you face and then going away so it's going away there lighter facing there light going away there but there's a darker shadow just cast there just blur it down with your fingers and you blend it in so 
there's a darker shadow just there on on that turreted on that sort of edge there. And we've got wind, like I said, there's a window in there. You just need to darken down underneath the window, back into this tower. Just darken down and create a little bit of texture into there. So you're building it up. And do the same for the side of the windmill. So the windmill's coming up there like that. Just a little line to establish it first. And soon soften all areas in and tidy them up. So that, that would be sort of the top of your windmill going there. And you'd have a window in here, there, and here like that. But like I say, we're going to, to sort it out. And then you've got a little rounded tower just here. And that's casting a shadow onto the back wall just over here. So put it in strong and then you just blend them in. So, like I said, you're just building up shapes. Now, I'm going to go up into here with a finer brush and start sort of pulling the lines in a little bit. And I'm using the same colour. I'm adding just a little bit more, a little bit more blue into it so that it's just greyed off a bit. I don't want it to be bright brown, bright brown. I'm just going to move that over so I can get it, I can rest on it because I've got to wet these here below. So, I'm going to put this area down here. down through you and what you do is you get, get it where you want it and then you establish shadows either side of it because it wants to be casting because it's sticking out it wants to be casting a little bit of shadow onto the side it's just really a matter of getting the, the, the spots done and then ever so finely there's a little buttress just here Don't need to make them too strong. There's another buttress here. Like that. You don't need to paint the, the line on that side. You establish that. You establish that with a little bit of light into there. And then just onto this side here is a darker shadow. So just put that in stronger, the, the side of the wall, a darker shadow just there. And don't use a black, a black, you might have to add a bit of black paint into part of it to stop, but I don't want black because I don't want it to, I don't want it to be the foreground of the painting and, and black and white would do that. So I'm using a, a bit of cerulean blue and greyed off with a bit of burnt sienna and just creating the shadowy, cast off this wall onto this wall here. And that sort of comes down just above that front wall there and it's darker just there. And actual fact, when you put that in, you can carry that down just there and just a little touch, there's just a little sense of castellations just in there. I don't know if you can see that now. Have I moved, have I moved around a bit? I'll tell you what, I'll move the... I'll move the easel around a bit so it's closer to the camera. That way you can see. I'll just zoom out a fraction. In fact, I'll, I'll lower it. And the problem is if I lower it too much, I'm then having to bend. I'm having to bend down. Excuse me, I've ordered, this is a really, really strong support and I'm having to bend it. I'll probably break the table before I get it right. The one I've got coming is one that's just, it goes the opposite way to what I think. The one I've got coming is just uh, more flexible. You just sort of touch it with your fingers and, and move the camera where you want. That's better. Right, so we've got that. So the blue and the burnt sienna mixed together and you're just gradually separating these walls. So there's a darker wall just there. Now I'm going to blend them in so they're not, not extreme. Just coming down there. 
and then there's a darker edge in that sort of turreted area just there like that and then you do have windows etc coming in so what i'm gradually doing i'm getting a bit i'll get a bit more blue into that mix and a bit of yellow ochre actually into it as well so it's not too strong and i'm going to gray the area behind the wall so i'm going to gray this area here behind that wall so that the wall stands out a fraction just there this is the wall in front a bit more yellow ochre in and just great where i put the dark bit in there i want a shadow but not as dark so i'm just going to add a bit of yellow ochre into that burnt sienna blue mix and i'm just going to pull that down and blend it so it's, it's not so strong a shadow blend that down in fact i'll probably put a bit more light into it anyway because like i said you don't want you don't want these shadows to be too exaggerated So I'm just toning that down so it's not as exaggerated. And then there's a slight gap of light. A slight gap of light there and then a darker shadow going off over to there. A bit farther out than where I've got it I think. So down there like that just blend that shadow in a little bit so you it doesn't want to be too acute it wants to wants to feel blended as though there's a the light is getting softer as you get away from it and you can use the same light gray colors i just wanted to lose the darker the in there so i'm just testing and i'm using a bit of blue and burn sienna with just a little bit of light into it so i don't want this this to be a strong a shadow I, it can be sharp there but it wants a sense of a sense of reflected light in part of it so it's not so not so solid just little little patches of light just dragged into that Maybe just a, a little bit darker here and there. That, that was maybe just a bit too light. That's about, I need to put some lights. I'm going to come back in and really, really detail this. And like I say, it's a, it's a one. It's a one that's not exactly, not exactly a spectator spot. A little bit of yellow orca white a little bit of yellow orca white and we want a little bit of light just down here just up to the edge there where it's just catching the light and maybe intensify the light a little bit more onto this wall just there and a little bit onto that edge Don't fill it in, just sort of pick out little patches and intensify the edges a little bit. Now I want some colour orca into there, so yellow orca and white, and just up into this, just up into this, uh, wait a sec, up into this area up here. I think that just wanted to be a bit taller. I think I had it just a little bit too, too dark. So I'm just taking that up and I'll touch it up with the dark. A 
good. Now I'm going to come down with just a sense of light with the orca and the, I'm, I call it orca, it's raw sienna, but I'm, 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 it's orca. I'm just going to come down this wall here and just lighten it up a fraction, just down this edge here. Take that up there. Into there. Now, add a bit more, bit more yellow orchid into it so it's not so bright. And just drag that in a bit and just break up little bits of light here and there, just patches. So you're sort of suggesting lighter stone here and there. A little bit up into there at the tops and do the same down the right hand side of that dark line you put so you're sort of painting the buttresses in so just pull it down to the right of that dark line and suggest the buttresses I think I might take this in a bit because I've got this broader than that. I've got this broader than that, so I'm just going to take that. I'm just going to lighten that up there because I want to take this this side a bit thinner. So I'm just losing that harder line for the moment. And then I'm going to fetch it in with that dark line. Just with the original blue and burnt sienna, I'm just going to fetch that dark line of that side in a bit more. And I put it in and I'm going to sort of soften it at the edges so that it doesn't stay too hard. So the left-hand side of that dark wants to be toned in with a bit of yellow orca burnt sienna so it, it, it feels like more of a shadow than a thin shadow, nothing heavy. So just blend it up to the line. Blend it up to the line and then just lighten it with the orca Put a little hint of white in. I've got some paper. I must have got to drop a bit of tissue paper in there. It's all sort of sticking to the brush. A bit of light just there in the edges. And then just lighten into that. So it's just a thin line of dark. Just wants to look like a thinner line, like that. So that's that's into there. That wants to go just a bit taller. Bit of blue and burnt sienna and just get this tower over this side just a little bit taller. It's all it's going away, but it just wasn't. It was just a bit and there's the castellations in between. Just needed a bit more height into it. I think we're getting there. Like I say, it should, it should be finished by end of lockdown. Just a little bit of light into there. When you're doing these, you need to sort of step away, step back and look at it as it is. Otherwise, you get too close and get too involved. What I need is a little bit of light. A little bit of light and orchid onto some of these corners so they just get a fraction sharper so that is light but I just want to lighten up the corners a little bit 
Så det er brug. Au. My hand went into cramp there. Or my fingers went into cramp. Right, I've got that lightened up, but I, I don't want it to be too bright. So what I do is I just tease it over and out into the... the actual, it's chucking it down here now. Tease it out into the main wall like that so it goes inwards. But it still sort of suggests a lighter edge in parts. So you're just creating these lighter edges. Can you hear the rain? Actually, it's not rain, it's uh, sleet. Is it sleet? Hail and everything. I think we're getting, we're getting there. The castle's starting to look like it's dominating the whole scene. Right, I've just... That turreted area over there. You can't see that now, can you? I'll just move the castle, move it back a bit. There. Just going to start lightening into this a bit. White and yellow orchid. Like I say, you'll get this video sent, so don't... Uh, don't pack, but I'm not sending it till I've finished it, because I'll have to edit it, because it'll be too big a file. But I will edit it, and then send it up to you when it's all been edited. Just the people in the class, not everybody, just the people in my classes will get this video sent up. So just touching in like that and breaking that stronger line up, a little sense of brickwork here and there, so it's just gradually turning into the darker side over there. It's bouncing off, this, off the tiles outside. And like I said, a little bit of light down into there. Where it's sort of, it's the cliff, it sort of comes out there and the cliff starts there. So you could be like, that there is probably too high up. I might tone that down with sky afterwards. That's higher than I wanted it. Right, so, a bit more white into there. This is going to be a long video, this one. That's why I want to edit it a bit. You've got a little turret just here, so just lighten it up. There's a little gap, castellations in there, like that, and then step it in a bit and create the edge down. And that just gets lost into this wall. And then this is the this is the little bit of turreted area in the front. And like I said, there's a little like window coming out. Probably for pouring hot oil onto the tourists. Stepping out like that. Bouncing. Right, I'm just working the way along and bit by bit we come in and paint all the fancy. I don't need to rest onto that just at the moment because I'm painting lower down. So going across the top of the I'll tell you what you need, you need when you're doing these lighter bits and the smaller brushes, you need what you've got to do, and I can't really show you too much, what you've got because I can't put the camera on it at the moment. What you're going to do is mix your paint how you want it. And I want a lighter wall, so I'm mixing a bit of yellow. I'll speak up because of the, the hail. And what you do is you, you mix it and then you take the excess off the side of the brush by rubbing it along so that you've only got. Oh, I'm going to get my glasses. I did fetch my glasses in. One sec. That's better. So what you've got to do now is just rub the excess off so you've only got a little bit on and we just need that light across the top of the, the wall. Just going along there. Drop it down to paint the light across the top of that tower just in front. Like that. Take this wall off. There are some castellations in 
But if I was you, I would just take the light line across and then put the castellations in afterwards. So you mix your paint, rub the excess off. And just paint the wall in. Just creating a lighter edge. If it's too bright for you, just get a little bit of the bluey burnt sienna so it's greyed off a little bit and just tone it down a fraction underneath. So you're just leaving that hint. You don't want a big massive white line or light line across. So if you've got it on and it's too thick, you just go up into it and pull it down a little bit. So you're just left with a, a lighter area altogether. Just pull that down into there. That light just needs to go across. That's tilting down. It just needs just needs to be squared off a bit more, so it needs to be lighter up there. A lighter patch there. A little lighter patch just down there. And fetch it out a bit more. That shadow wants to be toned down off that, so a little bit of blue, a bit of burnt sienna, and a bit of white into it, so the shadow is not so strong. And just fetch it down into it so it's just softer, and just blur it out as though there's a, sh a shadow strong next to it, but blurring out over to the to the side onto the wall. I'll just lighten that wall just a little bit there because it's just a bit too a bit too dark just there so I'm just going to light a little bit more darker in that's it just take that excess dark out there once you've got this all done it's then down to down to the details of windows etc but you've got to build up the whole idea of it that's too tall, so I need to I need to just go above that. And blend that back into that wall there, because that's just a bit too tall. I'll put the light back into that. It's more stubby. So I'm just darkening down just above it. I don't think we'll get many customers. I mean, there's people sheltering underneath outside. That's too big, that window, so I'm just painting into it and toning it down a little bit. It's a matter of looking and just step back and look at it. If you think something's just too dark or too light, just sort of dabbing into it and breaking it up. Sometimes just blending slightly over it with a slightly slight coloured brush just breaks up the, the strength of the shadow a little bit. I think that's looking fine there. Right, I want this, uh, the light side of this windmill area in. So you can get a white if you want and just put the top of the windmill in. Like that. I'll turn it all down afterwards and then a bit of yellow orca and white and create the light side of it. I fetch that light across. Just a little bit more white just to pick it out a fraction.
and then tone it down with yellow ochre. So it, I don't I want it to be bright white. I just want, and it's wider than, than the, the little white top. It's wider than that. That white top sort of sticks out from inside it. Just blend that in like that, just fetching it round. So you're getting a, a lighter shade over here, and it wants to gradually turn into the dark over there. And then this wall that's in front of it, this wall that's in front of it comes along here. And sort of steps down there. Like that. Now, cut that too dark just there. So, a little bit of burnt sienna blue. So it's sort of just greyed off. And just lose this really heavy dark line. And in them windows, they're just too strong. Paint into it to, to lose it and then paint in and blend it in. It's, it's, there's no there's no big shadow cast off this. That's got shadow cast off it because it's close to it. This is sticking out a bit more, and there's a curved area just behind it like that. Curved area just in behind it like that, which does have a shadow cast off from it because that's close. Well, this is farther away, so there's no shadow cast from that onto that. Just blend that down. It comes down a little bit farther than the wall. And just, it's like a syrup, like a syrup I've got. I've got just a syrup of colour. And just blending it that down. What you don't want is a, a it's only a very narrow line. In fact, you can lose that little bit of light just there, that little bit of dark just there. Just a very narrow line. So you're just blending these colours in by just shoving little bits of colour in up to the edge like that and just leaving the, the final edge for that, that lighthouse, lighthouse windmill. And into the wall just behind. That sort of turreted area just behind it. You know, the amount of people that go through that gap below us into the nougat centre. I just cannot understand whose brainwave it is to block it up. I mean, there's hundreds of people go through there every day. They say it's for a job centre. I think there's something else going on there, to be quite honest. I think there's something else going on. Right, well, just carry on along and lighten the top of that wall there. Again, just the same principle what you've done there. Just a little bit of a light edge just across the top. Move some out the road so that I see that you can see. And this comes along to just past the edge of the this edge here. So it wants to be light right out to about here, past that down coming wall, like that, and then down, and then along. I've got them too low. So I'm just going to obliterate them. So I'm just making a clean line right along at the moment and just lift them out. A 
and that comes along with this. I'm just dulling them out, tidy them up afterwards. We've got little sensors of lighter brickwork just into here. Just drag some patches in here and there like that. And if they're too bright, just rub them with your finger and just break them up. But the, if you look carefully, I mean, you haven't got the photograph, look carefully at the castle from any angle. There's a lot more lighter brickwork in places just here and there. In there. And a, a little bit more lighter just from this edge here. So just lighter across here. And definitely lighter down that side. Right, now here there's got castellations in. So just a little bit of your burnt CNN blue. Don't make it too strong because you're not painting dark lines. You want to be looking so you can see through to the, the buildings behind. I'm just going to put a little bit of an edge on that. And there's some odd little chimneys here and there, just sticking up here and there like that. And then just put these, there's only a couple of them. Just break in and just create them. And then very wet, with uh, more grey, just create a line coming along underneath like that wall. So just a, a fine line just coming along. The edge so it's like stepped out that that wall and you want to carry that along there don't want it exaggerated And that doesn't go right to the end, it sort of stops about there and then steps down and goes underneath there. Like that. And then there's turreted bits coming in between. Again, not strong. Don't make them too dark. I haven't got any black. There's just, it wants to be more, just, it wants to be stronger than the wall. You want to look as though you're looking through. There's a little bit of castellation just there. And there, like that, and there, like that. So all you're doing is just painting the background colour in reality. And this wants to be stronger because you're painting the background colour. So the two castellations in there want to be stronger because you're painting the back colour. Anne, love this picture. Thank you, Anne. It's going to take a while. Um... Right, so I'm just going to soften that, that wants to be rounded, so I'm going to soften that colour and this one in and round it. So I'm, I'm just mixing some grey with the blue and the burnt sienna and adding a little bit of white to it. As soon as you touch the paint you can see whether it's too strong, too light or too, that's alright, too much of so I'm just pushing a shadow into that left hand side and just darkening the brickwork a little bit down into there and I'm doing the same with this just just sharpening across I'm going to sharpen across that top edge to define it but I'm just sort of trying to get a curved feel to the, the building like there and actually that wall that's just in front of it has a castellation in just there so you can just darken that just a little bit just in front of that area there ignore that that white that you can just ignore that so you're building up the edges. Now, a little bit of light 
and come down the now that wants to go just that turreted area coming down wants to be blended in with the wall so it wants to come down there and be part of that wall like that and then this this area is in front so a little bit of burnt sienna blue like a gray again it, if you have to tone it down you can leave a bit of light and then just suggest a little bit of an edge just a little bit of shadow across like that and I, I know it's moving around the corner but you don't want to be painting on slants that's coming up there like that a bit towards you up across like that across again and then down in the shadow it's sort of like three different planes going across there like that in fact you can sort of see a line just down there not a hard line just sort of put some shadowy color into it so you separate it a little bit right darker color and all i'm using all the time is blue and burnt sienna cerulean and burnt sienna i'm not using any black i'm going to go underneath this i'm just going to go above that there's a, a, a window a turreted air window just in there so I'm just going to suggest that first. Make them stronger afterwards in the tops. And then there's a ledge just there. And then there's some windows in there. And then a darker edge to it just down there. Make it a bit stronger just there. And that's sort of standing out there. I'm going to start working into windows now. When you're doing this, the, the acrylic dries fairly quickly, but you've got to allow pass to dry so that you can rest your hand on it, or you use the the mild stick. But I can start, and it wants to be like a a syrupy. I've, I've got I can't show you it because the camera's broken or not working properly. It's syrupy. I've mi I've mixed bits of water in, bits of paint in, and I've made like a syrup. Going from dark to light. Wait a second, I'll see if I can. I'll see if I can turn it a fraction. Put it in. I'll put it in front of the camera. I'll put it in front of the camera the other way, otherwise it's going to run all over my hands. Can you see that that orca and there? It's like a syrup. Can you see it's just running? And there's there's. Yellow orca, blue, burnt sienna, and white. And all I'm doing is making a syrup in between each one that's just run all over my hands. Jennifer, me too. We think we need a ride up to. You do? Ken came on Monday, Tuesday, and had a coffee. You always come through for a coffee. We've got coffee over there, coffee station. Right, so th that syrup is sort of going from a white, a white set of paint over to a burnt sienna set of paint, over to a yellow orca paint, over to a blue paint, and I'm just running in between so that I can just keep blending the colours so that you don't get anything too uh, too strong or too light. It's like a, a light area. And I'm going to start, I'm going to start, and I'm going to mix some, some of the syrup. I might sell this syrup, I might bottle it up and sell it. I'm mixing some of the darker blue and burnt sienna so you get a great effect and I'm going to put in just a sense of a lip at the top, not much, just a sense of a, a lip going round there. And it actually, it curves here, but it actually straightens out round the corner. It's sort of like a flatter area there with a curve over to there like that. Leave a gap using the same colour, just sort of create a ledge. Again, don't don't make it too, uh, too hard and too distinctive. And then there's a set of windows. In reality, if I was, like I said, I would paint this, I wouldn't be putting this amount of detail in, just because she wants the castle in, I'm just putting more detail in than 
I think necessary. Now you've got a one, two, you've got sets of windows coming around. So it, don't paint dark all the way. Just suggest the tops of them like that with a little bit of paint in. Just suggest the tops. You come round here and there's one, two, three there. And then there's a whole darker area around the side. And then there's a patch here, just here. Just put it in. You're going to paint some light into it and, and sort of fetch it. But you, what you don't want, because you wouldn't see, like I said, this picture, this photograph's been exaggerated. She's, she's done too much HD, like Ultram on it. Um, so it, it's all too much. The windows are jumping out, etc. Uh, and they're wrong. It's it's too exaggerated. You wouldn't see all this lot from the distance, but I sort of, so you sort of put it in. Got that one in there. So you put it in and then you taper it out. So it's it's down to a suggestion. So I'm getting a lighter colour now, and I'm just going to go into the darker bits that I used for the the windows. I'm just going to put in a touch just at the bottom edge, a little bit more light. A little bit more light. Don't want to be too much, just... Can you see, it's just a touch. Just a touch, just to lighten up the bottom parts of them windows. And there's two panes in there. I'm saying panes, two edges in there like that. And then there's a little touch just across the top of that. Across the top of that. And then there's another ledge just coming across there. And then just odd little flicks of light round this edge where it's going into the sky a bit. So it's more of a blurred field. You want, you want to feel as though the, the lights, it's turning into the light on this curve. So you just, there's a window there as well, just going slightly up. But I'm not going to exaggerate. I'm just sort of suggesting where it is. And then little touches of light brickwork here and there, coming down to the bottom. And then it sort of curves out across here. So it's, it's a matter of little touches. Don't, I think I need to do, tone that down. Uh, and like I said, I've got no black, I've got blue and burnt sienna. It's strong. And I'm going to just put in the two sets of windows that look as though they're going around the corner there. Just darkening them into there. Darkening them. A little hint. And I just don't like them too tall. I'm just going to take them thinner by painting up into them. There's a little window in on the side. And I'm just making them a little bit narrower so they don't become too uh, too obvious. Right, so we're coming down to here. This is this is fine. I'm just darkening a little bit stronger underneath that sticky out window there. This is, I just need them to tone down. I just feel that these, I'm, I'm just going to get a little bit of dull yellow orca grey and just tone them down a bit. They're just a bit too bright. This is all a matter of this photograph just making things look too exaggerated. So I need to tone it down because it, 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 they're jumping out too much. So I'm just touching into them. and losing them a little bit. You've got to let the eye see these things. You haven't got to make everything too, too strong. Let the eye do a lot of the work. Right, so I'm going to come along and put the, the, the windows and the light into this one here. So coming down, what time is it? 12 o'clock, yeah. Coming down, we've got the line going across there. This is this wants to be more shadowy, just here. 
just down there more broken that wants to be the light that wants to be the light that wants to be more broken I'm just painting over that line touching that down here and I'm just going to paint slightly darker blue and blue and burnt sienna so it's grayed off if it's too dark you can lighten it up and then there's a, another shadowy area just there where it's turning away from you and I'll put some light into that so it's not too solid and that's coming down like that and it, it sort of steps out a little bit just here there's sort of like a, a ledge just there and you can you can suggest it going around there but not much and that same ledge there I blocked it out a bit so you can put that in across there just touch that dark patch out I'm just going to lighten into that a little bit so that you put it in but you lighten it out so that you just get a sense of the building going around the corner you don't want too hard of a contrast around these areas here you want you want it just to feel as though it's a, a different sort of light so there's a light there a different plane just there and a different plane just into the shadow so don't make it too don't make it too uh, too strong that's our lin down there making a the racket right you need a darker shadow behind it not a lot not too sharp you just need a, a dull shadow down there like that I'll put it in in a second get a bit more paint on the brush I'm just using the same brush all the time just this uh, thin cheap watercolor brush really uh, what I was doing oh, putting a stronger shadow in just down there and blur that shadow out over to the side a little bit so it's a gradual blurring off to the side I'm going to add a little bit of warmer yellow orca in or raw sienna and just add a little bit of light into there to create a sense of stonework just into there and then I'm going to sharpen them edges up and there's actually along that area there's some other brickwork some warmer brickwork so get a little bit of burnt sienna yellow orca and you don't want to make it as distinct as they have got it on the photograph but there is broken brickwork in amongst there so put it in put it in and if it looks too strong which it does just sort of blur it out with your finger a little bit so that it doesn't become too prominent right burnt sienna blue into your, into your syrup And just take this line through there so it goes round the corner a little bit like that we need some sense of windows in this very finely coming down that plane just near this window here there's a very fine sense of windows in there and if it's too strong which that probably is and then there's two more down here you can put them in and then you can just drift a, a, a brush over them to tone them down if they're too strong and then there's another one or two just there there's a sense of a line just down down here there's a sense of a line and then there's some stronger windows so stronger blue and burn sienna put them in strong here they, they sort of got an arch at the top so Put them in strong like that down there right and put that one in a bit stronger put one in round the corner stronger like that get that line just under there a bit stronger and then paint, this, paint a strong edge with a strong burnt sienna look because what you've got down here you've got an edge so you need to you need to create it just a little bit down there and then you've got a a doorway or window just here quite strong just 
behind that. Oops, got a bit of weight up there. It's a bit of weight up from from his sort of. So you've got a stronger doorway just in there, and blend into it so that it doesn't it doesn't jump out as a dead hard line. So I paid the lines in, then I blend into them so that they just they just like that there. I just you just sort of blend in and touch out here and there, so that it's a a gradual feeling to it rather than anything else. Now I want some light into them windows there, so just go into your your ochre and white just to get a lighter colour, not bright white. And it's just a touch really, just a touch into the into the windows there. And probably a little bit darker and just drag a little bit down onto them. I don't like that too strong, so I'm just gonna drag a little bit of lighter colour over. Just to blur them at that side and I might put a little sense of light just into that side over there and across the top of that edge there so they've got that there's a little bit of light wall just down here A little bit of light wall just there. Remember, we've got all the greenery to put in. There's a lot of work involved in painting this the way you want it. You've got to keep standing back. I just stood back a little bit and I realised it just needs to come out a bit over that side. A little bit over there. Just tilting in a little bit. Like I say, you get a, might you might get a more exaggerated angle because of the camera being at an angle, but it it will sort of. When I get this the camera, not the camera, the uh, the arm to make it come in front. I want this. There's an arm that you can buy. Like a, it's very very flexible, that you can pull inside and move around dead easy, so that I can swap. I can put you into focus, into view quite easy. Just lighten up them, just touch. Just the edge of the top of that. Like I say, I'm, it's only because I'm going off a photograph that's so bright that I'm looking to paint more detail in than I normally would. Right, so we've got this in, put a little bit of light here and there to break up some stone work and then come along to this this windmill now the windmill I've probably got just a bit too far down the top of the wall wants to be about level with that so the top of the wall wants to be there so I'm just going to put that in stronger and then I'll raise the grass up otherwise otherwise it'll all be too far down and that comes out past the past the windmill area along there and light across there and we can put a little bit more brighter light in fact I'll tell you what mix a little bit of yellow in with the white a little bit of yellow in with the white so you can get just that lighter feel to some of the brickwork and just make this brickwork on this windmill thank you Denise thank you just make this brickwork lighter in places as, as it's coming round into the into the sunlight like that. So just lighten it up from the edge. And it wants to have a slant to it. It does have a slant to it, but because you, the camera's at an angle, you might be seeing it straight. And don't paint don't paint like a hard line. Fetch it out and sort of brick brick it out here and there, just little touches. So there's a, there's a gradual teasing down to it like that and one or two little suggestions of bricks here and there just going across into the light a little bit like that and then just lighten that wall up the grass needs to come up farther this this wall isn't as deep as that 
I just need to fetch the grasses, the bank side up a bit farther. I just had that windmill just a bit too tall. So you're going along like that, a bit of ochre, a bit of white from your sort of syrupy stuff. Blot that in. Remember, I'm going to lift the grass. In fact, I'll lift the. I'll just put a, a darker blue and green in, just to show you that I'm going to lift the grass up to about here. So that's where the grasses are going to be and the greenery into there. So it's, it's in fact, it can go a bit higher, like that. And we'll build all this up. <laughs> I've got to take some doing this picture. It's not, uh, it's not going to be, it's not going to be uh, a quick, quick fix. What happened there? The camera beeped, I don't know what happened. Right, so, a bit of burnt sienna blue. I've got black actually paint actually out, but I don't want to use it. And we're going to darken down that edge. In fact, you can take an edge just to frack. This is blue and burnt sienna. Just take a, a lip across the top of that, like that. Just take a lip, darken down the far edge, like that. Just get that lip in. Put in the dark for the windows. Like that, it's one there, and there's a couple just here. Just put them in strong, and then I'm going to paint into them a little bit so that the brickwork blends in a fraction. So, cut that in strong. Now, I'll just get oops, I've got black paint on my fingers. Now, just get some of the burnt sienna yellow orca, a little bit of white into it. Like I said, it's like turning into a, a syrup. And tone that black line down so that it's not so prominent. It wants to just be thin. So you're just going... Sorry, I've got something stuck on the brush. You want to be going into there and just sort of painting up to the edge. I've got a bit of, I'll have to get it out after there's a bit of paper or something just stuck there. Paint into the edge so that the black line that you put in isn't so broad. Like that. Right, a bit of light. Don't want any bright white, a bit of light. Bit of the light orca and a little touch of white, not too strong, otherwise it'll jump out too much. And just in there for the, the light on the on the windows underneath. I'll have to get a blade or something and scrape that up. There's a lump of paper. I don't know if you can see it. You probably can. There's a lump of, I think it's tissue paper that's just come off when I clean my hand. You'll have to realise, those of you who don't know me, that I'm generally a real tidy painter. I, I, really, I really am obsessed with tidiness. Fetch this wall out in front of this building here. So fetch this wall out in front of it. A little bit lighter and just get a, a top edge to that. That wants to feel as though it's curving round in a way. So just a slight curve there, not much. Just a slight lightness there and just lift it up and round. wants to be broader and deeper on the left hand side and then windows you see and little bits of windows there's just in front of them got a bit of dark just in front of them there's a little bit of a castellation just there 
just a little touch of castellation in front of them there. And then there's that doorway that got lost behind. Like window there that got lost behind that blob of paper. I'll scrape that out afterwards. Right, that line down there, just a little blur of shadow, not much, just a little blur of shadow onto the the curved area behind it. It doesn't want to be too much, it just wants to be a, a sense of it going across there. And then you can lighten it up with a little bit of sienna and white and plenty of this syrupy thing. There's no water, but there was water. All I've done is soften, soften the pigment a bit so that it, it paints easier. And you want to feel as though it's lighter just there. Because that is actually behind that, so it's catching the light a bit. Just behind that, just lighten it up, just behind it, fetching it out. And it wants to be just a little bit taller, so I'm just going to lose that line. That wants to come out here. Let's lose that. Right. Darker blue burnt sienna to get your grey feel. Take this line up a bit more. Curve it. It's a curve, so it wants it not an exaggerated curve, just a sense of it coming round. And going off to the side a little bit so just a sense of it and then a little bit darker just underneath because you've got a got an edge just there so just underneath very lightly and then you can emphasize it stronger as it's going round into the shadow so you can make it a little bit stronger don't make it a big curve down because you, you have sort of level with it so just Make it stronger coming out there. Make that line just above it stronger. I'm just going to paint a little bit of light into it because I've just got it dropped down a bit more than I want. I just want to go. Don't want that to be too prominent, that line. Into there. Like that. And then I'm going to strengthen the shadow in there with the strong blue and burnt sienna. I'm just going to make that a strong line there and just in there and there and make it a strong line down like that. There's a, going to be a little window there so just a, a sense of the middle bit just like that and then exaggerate the, the edge of this wall down here in front of it. It sort of comes along here, and that dark of that comes out. This is this is casting a shadow onto this wall, so that dark comes out like that, quite strong. And then there's a bit of grass in there as well. So cut that. What what you want now is just a little bit of light, nothing strong, just a little bit of white and yellow ochre, and you want to create the light brickwork just round that sort of slit in there that sort of slit you just want to create a little bit of light either side of it like that so you've got that sense of brickwork around it and you can just add a bit more into there i think that's all right then just a little touch of light across the top edge again and an edge down there and a little bit of touch of light just into there Times it twenty past twelve. Got that. Got that. I think that's looking all right. We need to go up the top, and and develop. I also need. I've got. I've got a really black piece of paint or brown piece of paint up on the sky. Actually, I've got a, over to here. You can't see. I might, might be able to turn the camera a bit. There. There's no paint on there. And I want to lower this anyway, so I'll do that afterwards as well. Up there, next to that tape, is a bit of brown paint. I blame somebody. 
Right, so I think we're looking all right down here. Um, we've got the green. I'm just going to lighten that green though. Not bright, so I'm, I'm, I'm using... I think the cameras might be thinking we've had been on too long. You can still see everything, can't you? Right, so a bit of yellow and blue and a little bit of white into it so it's not too bright. And I'm just going to paint the edge of this the edge of this sort of green area that's coming up there. A little bit more white and yellow in. It's where the it's where the land the cliff edge is just meeting the castle, just there. We're just lifting up like that. Across the top a little bit. Up to this wall. And then from that wall just pull down some light into there and make that just a little bit brighter so that there can be just a, a little feeling of light and it wants to come from the edge of that wall and down slightly in front of all of this lot here just wants to feel as though it's catching the light because it's, it's sort of curved round you've got darker patches lighter patches and that sort of comes down here and we will build that up but I, I, what i want to do before I come down to there, otherwise I'll be working on myself. I'm just sort of trying to show you where you can establish these senses of lighter areas and darker areas on the on this bank side down there. I need, and I'll tell you what I need to do, I need to paint in a little bit darker behind that wall. So I'm just getting some yellow orchid burn sienna. And I'm just going to darken this wall just behind it. I said the brickwork was stronger. I think I need to darken it down so that white light wall there just stands out. So I'm just going to darken upwards, tease it in, down, and tease it in across there. Little bit of light stuff, so I don't want it to be too too strong so I'm just going to break into it a little bit just creating some light in patches down there so I'll just shove this in fact you can probably put a little bit of light across it to make sure just shove this wall in front a bit more like that so it's got a lighter edge I think we'll probably leave it at that because you're probably wanting to go and get some shopping done. Um, put a touch of blue. Just into there where it just feels a bit. It's like I said, don't don't worry about having dead hard edges, have some edges that's just blurred into it. I think that's, that's looking fine. I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, you know, I'm going to, while, while I'm, this afternoon, while I'm sorting the cameras out, I'll put some more sky in over here where it's blurred. You, you don't need to worry about it. I'll, I'm actually going to put some sky over that as well, because that's just a bit too high. So I'm going to just paint in a bit of sky across here, and I'll do it later, but it's all it is is blue and white just to blur it in and I'll get rid of this blob of paint afterwards. So I'll just change to the other camera. Where's the other camera going? So you can see it there. Ignore that white. That's 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 going to be toned down. So ignore that. So we've got basically this area done. And we've got most of this. It's just a matter of putting a sense of detail into these, toning toning the darks down so that they're not bright darks. And gradually building it up and getting this sense of the castle dominant in the area that needs to be lowered the sky there and that blob of paint there needs to be gone um, so I'm going to actually leave it at that and it's, it's not going to be a fast one this it's going to be a more detailed picture but like I said I will actually uh, paint I will I've got a big square canvas I will do some of the palette knives after this, but I've got to get this done because it's a commission. Uh, we've got quite a lot to do with the boats, etc., and the dogs, and get the sea finished off. 
the castle, it takes time, especially when you especially when you want to, as an it's not just a matter of suggesting it, it's a matter of painting in detail into there. So I think that, that's it, because the cameras are beeping, which probably means they've been on a couple of hours and they're starting to heat up. Uh, right, fine. <laughs> I will get the other camera stuff, because one of the cameras is just packed in this morning. I need, I need a I need something to eat there. I need a drink. Right. All right then, folks. I'll see you later. It's bright enough out there now. So have a have a decent weekend, and uh, I'll see you in your class on Monday, and I'll see you down here on Tuesday. Well, oh, Monday Monday's a bank holiday, isn't it? Let me know whether you want to do a one on Monday, or whether you want a bank holiday on Monday or. But I'll I'll be down here Tuesday. Take this, and we'll get this whole area finished. The castle, etc., and we'll be on with the boats. Right? Thank you very much. I'll talk to you later. See you later, folks. I don't know whether I'm still live or not. Oh, I, I am. And I don't know. Right, see you later. Oh, Jeannie, don't think I could tackle the whole picture. Just do the Castle, yeah. Uh, it's a, there's a lot of picture uh, of the dogs, etc. But it's a big one. Thank you, Eric. Love watching. That maybe can be a sea. I'm going to put some seagulls in because they've asked for some seagulls. Oh, you mean that black blob? It's more like a, a stoker. The Messier Smith coming over. Right. Okay then, folks. Have a nice weekend, and I'll see you. Uh, and on. They'll get all.